Did you know the Pledge of Allegiance? Did, that's an oath. Because you're making an oath, your allegiance is to that flag, United States of America. You know what else is an oath? The oath that you got to do in Freemasonry. God says do what? Love no false oath. God says love no false oath. It's false because it's not of God. Right. Neither spared he the place where Lot sojourned. God didn't spare that place because there was so much evil going on there. Read. But abhorred them. But hated that land because of the evil. Think about what America's doing. Didn't America pass gay marriage? Yeah. yeah. I'm sick of the oppression of my people. Right. That's what we doing. We out here sighing and crying against what? For all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right. We teaching against same-sex marriage. You understand? We teaching against masonry. Because it's not of God. Over there. What's going on, boss man? Yeah, man. Um, I know they was talking about the Freemasonry thing. I know a lot of our people only get into like Eastern Star, Freemasonry, because of what they did in college, whether it's in a fraternity or sorority. I understand that. Um, I wanted to share the second Maccabees 415. A lot of our people, well, I say majority of our people, bro. You know, we go to these HBCUs, right? But they don't really teach us our true history. Correct. You know, these Greek fraternities. A lot of our people don't even understand that the Greeks had us in slavery. You understand? But yet, we go ahead and follow after their customs. I want to show you something real quick. Watch this. 2nd Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 15. Watch this, bro. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. The honors of our fathers. Let me ask you a question. Who, who are our forefathers according to the Bible? Bring it out. Think about it, because we always talk about what? 1619, transatlantic slave trade, right? Black History Month, we have 28 days to go over our history on this side of the world. But my question would be, what is our history before 1619? And I know you, you know, you, you, I, I can say, I can tell that you're a man, you know, who probably knows a few things, you've probably been around the block, but these are the type of questions I like to ask and engage with my people, right. because to be honest with you, are they teaching us history before 1619? Not really. Not really. So that's why I, that's why I like to pose these type of questions to, to get you thinking a little bit. You know what? What is my history before 1619? Because I saw your face, especially like, you know, I don't really know. They don't teach us that, bro. But I'm going to show you something right here. This is uh, third century BC during the Maccabean, Maccabean period, the Grecian captivity. Right. Okay, watch this, my brother. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. So our forefathers, they're people like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, King Solomon, Jesus the Christ. They don't teach us that. Those are actually our blood ancestors. That's our kinfolk right there. That's right. All right, so the Bible said, read it again from the top. Watch this. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. So, you know, in today's society, we don't set by the way they live. You know what we follow? We follow after these American customs, after these Greek customs, and then we join things like uh, Freemasonry or Eastern Star. It's not because uh, you wanted to do that willingly, you just didn't know no better. You didn't know your true history. You didn't know that you were better than that. Right, right. You understand? Watch this. But liking the glory of the Grecians. But our forefathers today, no, I'm sorry, our, our people today, they like the glory of the Greeks better than the glory of our forefathers. Read. Best of all. Best of all, go ahead. By reason whereof, so a calamity came upon them. Like uh, the officers was going over. That's the reason why we on the bottom. Right. You understand? It don't matter where you go north, central, south America. We are in the hoods and ghettos. Am I lying? Right. That's the truth. Yeah. But why? It don't matter. Like, you know, we've done uh, politics, civil rights, economics, religion. We've done all of these things, but we can't find it. We can't find a way to climb to the top. It's, why, it's because we're cursed right. for breaking God's commandments. You agree with that? All right, read on. For they had them to be their enemies. So it's the thing. It's the thing. We know the atrocities. Think about the transatlantic slave trade, boss. Who put us in slavery? Who put us on those boats? Who, which, which nation of people? That's my question to you. Which nation of people did that? You say, yes, Africans, but they sold us to who? Huh? To the white man. 100% correct. I agree 100% with you, bro. 
the Hamitic tribes, the Nilotic tribes, the, the actual uh, tribes that come from Kim or Ham, you understand? Yes, they sold us, the Shemitics, the real, the real Semitic people. Okay, we're the Jews according to the Bible. You believe that? Yeah, we're the real Jews. We're not African or Nilotic tribes. No, we are the Jews according to the Bible. Right. Okay, yes, they did sell us to the white man. So the question would be, now we understand that, right, through history, biblical history, why do we continue to follow these customs of the other nations? So now that we know better, we got to do what? We got to do better now, right? right? Give me, um... Give me the book of uh, Zechariah 8, 17. Watch this. So now that we know better, we have to do better. And when we do better, we got to do thus saith the Lord. Right. All right? Because this is our this is our forefathers right here. This is our history right here, boss. All right, watch this. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17. Go ahead. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts. Right. So think about this law right here. When it say don't imagine evil in your hearts, right? Think about how we can clean up our communities. Because think about what? Murder. Murder comes from what? Imagining evil against your brother. Having hatred towards your brother. If God said, don't let any of you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, don't imagine evil in your hearts, that'll clean up our communities. Right. We'll be one, closer, uh, one step closer to rising to the top and getting out of here. Read that verse again. Watch this, Bob. And let none of you imagine evil in your heart against his neighbor. Who is our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? Is it is it Chuck and Harry that live next door to you? Who is our neighbor according to the Bible? You say your neighbor's everyone. You got what I want? Watch this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Watch this. Thou shalt not hate thy brother. Thou shalt not do what? Hate thy brother. Thy what? Thy brother. So the Bible say, don't hate your brother. You see how these are connecting, right? Precept upon precept. This connected with the verse we just read in Zechariah 8. Read it again, boss. Thou, I mean, bro. <laughs> thou shalt not hate thy brother. And say, thou shalt not hate thy brother. So you, my brother. I shall not hate you. Read. In thine heart. I shouldn't imagine evil against you, bro. Right. Watch this. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Thy what? Thy neighbor. Thy what? Thy neighbor. Who's your neighbor? Your brother. You see that thing right there? So the Bible say we can't imagine evil against one another because we brothers. The other nations, that's not our neighbor. Right. Anybody outside of this 12 chart sign, 12 tribe sign, they are not our neighbors. God says the Israelite brother and sister, they are our neighbors. Right. Go back to Zechariah 8, 17. Watch this. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17. Uh -huh. And let none of you imagine evil in your heart. It says, let none of us imagine evil in our hearts against who? Against his neighbor. That's your brother. Read. And love no false oath. And do what? Love no false oath. And do what? Love no false oath. You got different oaths. Did you know the Pledge of Allegiance? That's an oath. Because you're making an oath. Your allegiance is to that flag, United States of America. You know what else is an oath? The oaths that you got to do in Freemasonry. God says, do what? Love no false oath. God says love no false oath. It's false because it's not of God. Right. Proverbs 3, 5. It's false because it's not of God, bro. Like, what's it at? I know some stuff, you know, about that. Because, because guess what? Guess what? There's a lot of brothers that came out of masonry, man. There's a lot of sisters who came out of that Eastern Star stuff. And they let it be known. There's stuff that's against this Bible. Right. Guess what? You can't serve two. Give me that Revelation 3.15, we're coming right back to this. And this is this is what we teaching, man. We teaching salvation to the captives. That's right. Because guess what? We may be out physically, out of those chains, right? Out of slavery, but our mind is still in captivity. Why? Because we following after America. Wow. We following after these Greekish fashions wow. that take us further and further away from what God wants us to do, boy. Wow. You see that, right? Watch this. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. Go ahead. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. Uh -huh. I would that thou wert cold or hot. Read. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. God wants you to be all the way in or all the way out. There ain't no in between with God. I know a lot of people say they love God. You know, they're, they're Christians, all of that stuff like that. Hey, I'm going to let you know. That Christian church that's open today, that ain't the way. Bring it up. 
that ain't the way. You're like, what you mean that ain't the way? Are you listening? You, you believe me when I say that? All right, that thing ain't the way. Give me second edge of 719. That's not the way. And I'm going to show you that's not the way. Why? Because they say it's okay for the, uh, the choir to work to be a gay dude. They say it's all right for pastor to sleep with the lady on the first row. They say it's okay to eat pork. God say no to all of that. Right. That ain't the way, man. Watch this. The book of 2nd Esther, chapter 7, verse 19. Come on. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. There's no judge above God. It don't matter what man say. We ought to obey God rather than man. Yes. You understand that, right? Watch this. And none that have understanding above the highest. Nobody has understanding above the highest. So if God say the Sabbath day is Saturday, we ought to listen to that thing. If God say a man should be laying with another man, we ought to listen to that thing. Right. If God say don't eat pork, shrimp, crab, or lobster, who are we to speak against the most high God? Bring it up. Watch this. Read on. For there be many that perish in this life. There be many that's going to die in this life. And guess what? A lot of them is in that Christian church right now. Read. Because they despise the law of God. They despise. They don't care what God say. They know ain't, supposed to, ain't no uh, boy supposed to be up there twitching with his wrist broke. They know that. But they don't care. Read that verse again. For there be many that perish in this life. Go ahead. Because they despise the law of God. They hate God's laws. You know what, man? I'm going to tell you something. When we come out here and teach this Bible, you know who our number one enemy is majority of the time? Bring it out. The people in the Christian church. Right. Bring it out. They hate us. But wait a second. Ain't we reading the Bible? Right. So think about it. Who are they really mad against? They hate God. Right. It ain't us. We just the prophets. We just teaching the Bible. But they got a problem with us. They got a problem with us. I want to share something with you. Finish that off. Because they despise the law of God uh -huh. that is set before them. Right. God set his laws before us, but they hate it. Watch this. For God had given straight commandments. God gave us straight commandments. You know what that straight is talking about right there? It means strict. Meaning, if God says, keep my Sabbath day, and the Sabbath day is on Saturday, according to Exodus 20 and 8, you can't change the Sabbath day to Sunday now. That's right. You know? Meaning what? When he said, I gave you straight commandments, no, this is this is what I said. Right. There is no left. There is no right. You have to do it exactly how I told you to do it. Right. That's right. it. Right. You got a problem with that? So let me ask you, if God told you to keep it Sabbath day and it's on Saturday, would you do it? You're going to do that thing. You, you do that. All right, my brother, finish right. that off. Verse 21. For God hath given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live. What they should do to what? To live. Come on. Even as they came, and what they should do to avoid punishment. To avoid punishment. Next chapter, verse 50. It says, what they should do to avoid punishment. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you believe that America, or life as we know it, is going to continue to go on like we see it today? Okay, you say no. I, I got I to gotta, hear. I can't assume nothing. When you say no, that means you think it's something's going to happen, right? What, what you think going to happen? To the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to America, as we know. What you think going to happen? Okay. You can feel it coming. Yep. What, what, what do you, well, if you had to guess, if you had to have a hypothesis on what that change would be, what would you say? More. You say war. Right. It's going to be war. I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, read that. Watch this. Second Esther, chapter 8 and verse 50. Oh, yeah. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in latter times shall dwell in the world. You see that? Is misery a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. Read it again. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter times shall dwell in the world. In the latter times. I'm going to let you know. Right now, these are the latter times. Right. As soon as Christ departed to be on the right hand side of the Father in the book of Acts, this bega that began the latter days. That's right. And we're living in them and we're getting closer to the return of Messiah. My right. my Watch this. Because they walk in great pride. Because the earth today, think about it. You ever heard of something called 
gay pride? You know, you heard of that before, right? It says misery's coming because they do what? Walk in great pride. Walk in great pride. What if I told you that the United States of America, prophetically, according to the Bible, was known as Sodom and Gomorrah? Bring it out. Bring it what if I told you that? Do you know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? No, I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. Uh, Sirach chapter 16, verse 8. This one's easy. This one's easy. So we're going to tell you exactly what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? Little crash course of history. All right? Read that for me. The book of Sirach, chapter 16, verse 8. Neither spared he the place where Lot sojourned, but abhorred them for their pride. So Lot, okay? Lot lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? God did not spare the place and where he sojourned because there was a bunch of filth. There's a bunch of iniquity, a bunch of sin going on. And you know what the main sin was? Fornication. You know? Sodomy, which is male and male, woman and woman. Bestiality, which is humans and beasts. Right, pedophilia, all of that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, read it again from the top. Neither spared he. The place where Lot sojourned. God didn't spare that place because there was so much evil going on there. Read. But abhorred them. But hated that land because of the evil. Think about what America's doing. Didn't America pass gay marriage? Yeah. yeah. Hey, you ever heard of something called, uh, it's, well, you got Nambla, but what's the other one? Maps. Minor attracted persons. That's a new, you never heard of, it, of that before. Look it up, it's true. NAMBLA was the National Association of Man Boy, National something Man Boy Love Association. But now they got a new thing called MAPS, which is Minor Attracted Persons. What they're trying to say, bro, is that it's okay for a man to be attracted to a younger boy. That's what America's pushing. I'm just letting you know, if you didn't know, you need to go look this stuff up. Okay? Watch this. Read it again from the top. Neither spared he the place where Lot sojourned. Neither spared he that place, because all that wickedness is going on, read. But abhorred them. But, but hated them for? For their pride. For their pride. What was their pride in? Fornication. Or gay pride like America today. Right. Read. He pitied not the people of perdition. The people that ought to be destroyed. Meaning what? The wages of sin is what? You know that scripture? All right, that's all right. We can tell you that, boss. Sorry, my name is Matt. We could deal with you. That's you know right. why? Because you ain't got that Christianity doctrine on your mind. Oh, you, you an open book. Meaning what? The words of God are going to stick better for you. Watch this. Romans 6 and 23. We're coming right back. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Watch this. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So if you is in the midst of fornication, you're asking to die. That's what the Bible's saying. Now go back to where you read perdition. Read that. Sirach chapter 16 verse 9. Go ahead. He pitied not the people of perdition. God didn't pity the people who were set to be destroyed. Bring it up. Perdition means destruction. Meaning what? The way to the sin is death. You asking for the Lord to destroy you. Read. Who were taken away in their sins. They died in their sins. God rained fire and brimstone on the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. Read. Nor the 600,000 footmen who were gathered together in the hardness of their hearts. Now I want to be Revelations 11. Revelations 11 and 8 because I said, hey, what if God prophesied America to be the same thing that it was before? Sodom and Gomorrah. He's saying this is the present day Sodom and Gomorrah. You know? Watch this. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Watch this. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. When it say their dead bodies, so we're going to break this all the way down to you, bro. Proverbs 21, 16. I'm going to let you know something. From Genesis to Revelation, this whole Bible is talking about us, bro. That's right, right. When I say us, I'm talking about the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So when you read it, you ain't got to be scratching your head. It says there. Oh, that's us. It ain't talking about the white man. It ain't talking about the Asian man. It's talking about you and me. Right. This is our book. You know why a lot of black people don't like to read? <laughs> Because we don't know how great we are. Right. We ain't never read nothing that was literally directed toward us. Because we getting sick and tired of all the laws that's passed against us. We think that white, uh, Jesus is white. Jesus is not white. He's a black man. That's right. And guess what? He's coming back for black people. Yes. That's 
the gospel. That's the good news that we ain't been taught. That's why we follow uh, sports. That's why we follow music. That's why we follow sororities and fraternities. Right. Freemasons, we do those things because we don't know how great we really are, bro. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's you and me, for example. You know what the way of understanding is? Psalms 111 and 10. The way of understanding is the Bible, keeping God's commandments. So if we wander away from keeping God's commandments and start joining these other things, God says we are spiritually dead. We're not living. We only come to life when we start keeping God's commandments. That's right. Here's the understanding right here. Watch this. Psalm chapter 111, verse 10. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says the fear of the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. And that's what we got to do. We got to start doing God's commandments so we can come to life. We thought we was living. Uh-uh. You ain't living until you apply God's law. That's right. As the Israelite man that God called you to be. That's who you are according to your DNA, your blood. That's who you are, bro. Right. Give me Baruch 336. Because, and we coming right back to that revelation. Baruch 336, man, because a lot of our people, they, they say, you know, in masonry, they got, the, they get like different knowledge and different stuff like that. Uh-uh. That knowledge does not supersede the Bible. Right. I'm going to let you know straight up. And think, oh, and then um, give me Psalms 105 and 22. Before that, yeah, give me Psalms 105, 22, and then I want that. You ever heard of the forefather Joseph with the uh, multicolored coat? Now his brothers were jealous of him and sold him into slavery, and then he ended up rising up in Egypt and, lead, and uh, being second in command under Pharaoh in Egypt. Kind of, no, not really. Okay, so watch this. This is the forefather Joseph right here. I'm just showing you what type of knowledge God gave us Bring it out. over the nations. So we don't need stuff like that. We got the true source right here. This is a Hebrew. This is an Israelite. Second in command to Hem Hemetics, Nilotic tribes, actual Africans. God set him up as number two. Watch this. To bind his princes at his pleasure. To bind his princes at his pleasure. I mean, hey, don't do this for me. You know what? You're going to go to prison. No, I need you to do this. Come in the palace and do this for me. He was calling shots in Egypt. Right. And what? He was nationality. He was an Israelite. Right. Read. And teach his senators wisdom. And do what? Teach his senators wisdom. Meaning what? His wise men in leadership. Joseph is the one responsible for teaching them things like what? Mathematics. Right. Different sciences. Joseph did that. So the question is, why do our people follow things like Greekish customs, fraternity up. sororities, things like Freemasonry, Eastern Stars, because we don't know how great we really were. Right. Our forefathers was teaching the, uh, the ancient Egyptians with the pyramids. Right. That is the symbol of what? Freemasonry. Right. You understand? Bro, that's not us. That came after us. Right. We gotta put that stuff away, bro. We gotta put that idolatry away, because it's only gonna take us away from God. That's right. Go back to Baruch 3.36. Watch this, bro. Baruch chapter 3 verse 36. Go ahead. He has found out all the ways of knowledge. God has found out how many? All the ways of knowledge. Who did he give it to? And has given it unto Jacob. You know who Jacob is? Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Right. And from him come the so-called American blacks, the so-called West Indians, Haitians, Mexicans, Dominicans. You understand? That's us. He gave all the knowledge to us, man. Not these other nations. Read it again. He found out all the way of knowledge. Read. And have given it unto Jacob, his servant. Uh -huh. And to Israel. And to who? And to Israel. That's you and me, man. Read. His beloved. God says we are his beloved. That's right. And he gave us all the ways of knowledge. Uh, read on, chapter 4, verse 1. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. Go ahead. This is the book of the commandments of God. Come on. And the law that endureth forever. How long? Forever. I'm going to let you know. You know those pyramids in Egypt? When Christ come back, they going to be destroyed. That's right. You know that big uh, uh, Jesus statue in Brazil? That, you know that, that huge one? Guess what? When Christ come back, that's going to be destroyed. That's right. All of these idols, all of their works that they made. But you, you know it's not going to be destroyed? the laws of God because we're going to establish the law on this earth and all nations are going to be subject unto us read that verse again this 
is the book of the commandments of God Read. and the law that endureth forever. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. To what? Shall come to life. That's, that's what we're trying to get you to understand, man. Read up. When we in sin, when we not keeping these commandments, we're not living, man. God is telling us the only way we live is by keeping his commandments. Go back to Revelation 11 and finish that point. I'm showing you, because you said it, you felt that war is coming. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. But understand this, bro. If you don't come out of the ways of America, that war that's coming to America, you're going to go down with America. That's and that's why we out here to save people like you. That have, you know, that's starting to connect the dots a little bit. So you can come out of that foolishness because that's not going to get you the kingdom of heaven. Right. Heaven is real. Right. Heaven is rulership. Because guess what? Who rule right now? The white man. When Christ come back, the black Messiah, he going to rule. That's right. Understand that thing right there. He going to rule. And if we know what's good for us, we want to rule with him. We don't want to be on the bad side of that. I'm telling you. Read this. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8 Go ahead. and their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city Go ahead. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt right this place This is that great city where our brothers and sisters lie spiritually dead because we don't know who we are We don't know our nationality and we don't keep God's commandments, right. but he said this is called Sodom and Egypt Why he's making a parallel Egypt and antiquity and history they were what? One of the greatest kingdoms to ever reign, right. to ever rule. Guess what America would be in history? One of the greatest kingdoms to ever rule. That's right. So God is making a comparison. He already knew this would happen. Give me Isaiah 46 and 10. God already knew that this would happen, bro. Because of our sin, because we sin against God. He said, you know what? Instead of uh, you ruling like when King David was in charge, King Solomon was in charge, we had 80 years of rulership, right. 40 years of peace. That's our history. But guess what we did? We broke God's commandments. And he took that from us. And now he let the other nations reign against us, over us. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. No. Declaring the end from the beginning. You see, this was written thousands of years ago. But God, he already declared the end from way back then. He knew that the white man would rise up and be the greatest nation on the face of the earth. Read it again. Declaring the end from the beginning. Go ahead. And from ancient times. The things that are not yet done. Right. God already knew that. Read. Saying, my counsel shall stand. You know what God's counsel is? Isaiah 14 and 1. You know? You know what God's counsel is? You have an idea because you said war is coming to America. That is part of his counsel. But you know who's supposed to win in the end? Take a wild, take a wild guess, my brother. Who's supposed to win in the end? Is it going to be America? Who's going to win it? Gonna win. I don't think America's gonna win either, boss. Who you think gonna win it? Gonna be China? You think China gonna win it? Nah. Take a wild guess. Israel. Israel gonna win in the end. You and me. The ones that's hated and despised here, man. The one that catch beatings by the cops and get killed. The brother of Mississippi told the people a white militia was chasing him. They chopped his body up, man. In Mississippi last week, bro. That's what we gotta deal with. You understand? But God say his people is going to win in the end. Right. But guess what? The only way we're going to win is if we're doing what he say. We got to be obedient, bro. Right. Read this. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Go ahead. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. God will have mercy on Jacob, which is Israel. Read. And will yet choose Israel. Come on. And set them in their own land. You know Israel today? Who's supposed to be in that land? You know the land, Israel? The white people with the tassels, with the black hats, looking goofy and stuff. You know who really supposed to be over there? You and me. That's our land. But God, we ain't got to worry about it. No, we're not, we not taking a boat. We're not taking a plane. We're not picking up arms. Uh-uh. We ain't got to worry about that. Because God's going to do what? Set them in their own land. God is going to put us back in the land. You see that thing right there? Israel wins in the end. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. The strangers is what? The nations who got us in captivity right now. Right. They're going to be joined with us. You think they're going to be equal to us when we rule them? What, what are they going to be if they're not going to be equal? What you think they're going to be? They're going to be servants right. to the Spirit of the Lord dealing with brother right now. That's right. Free. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Come on. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Free. And the house of Israel 
shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. For what? Servants and handmaids. That's the gospel right there. Yeah. Right. Give me Luke chapter 1 verse 70, man. That's the gospel, man. But we're not going to get there if we don't do what? What we got to do in order to get that. Because a lot of people say, I can keep smoking blunts. I can keep having women, uh, jumping from women to women, and I'm going to get that. No, you're not. What we got to stop doing, bro? We got to stop doing what? I guess we got to be obedient. We got to be obedient. That's right. That's it. We got to be obedient to what God say. Right. That's what it is, my brother. Uh, read that. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, uh -huh. for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, uh -huh. which have been since the world began. Watch this. That we should be saved from our enemy. That we should be what? Saved from our enemy. That we should be saved from our enemies. Guess what? So called white man, he our enemy. He put us in slavery. Right. This Chinese man, guess what? They are enemy. They had us in captivity too. The uh the A-Rat man at the corner store that said the tall tees. He our enemy too. Right. God said it gonna come a day that he's gonna save his people from the enemies. But we gotta be on that right side. Right? You understand that thing? Give me Ezekiel 9 and 4. IUIC TV. Chapter 9 and verse 4. Watch this. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city. So guess what? God has angels. You believe that? God has angels. And he commands them to go through the midst of the cities. Watch this. Through the midst of Jerusalem. Through the midst of Jerusalem. Who, who originally inhabited Jerusalem? Us. Us. We are the Israelites. We originally inhabited Jerusalem. So guess what? God has angels sent to wherever we reside today. Right. And he's looking to see what we're doing. That's right. Read it again. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, uh -huh. through the midst of Jerusalem, Read. and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry. It says set a mark upon the foreheads, the mind of the men that do what? Sigh and that cry. That do what? Sigh and that cry. I'm sick of the oppression of my people. That's right. That's what we're doing. We out here sighing and crying against what? For all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right. We teaching against same-sex marriage. You understand? We teaching against the masonry. Because right. it's not of God. That's right. And guess what? The angels are reporting this back to the Most High. Right. What's taking place right now? So you think you can... No, 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 no. You, you cannot escape it. God is omnipotent or omnipotent. God is everywhere. And he has his messages, the eyes of the Lord, they're everywhere reporting back to him. Right. Read it again all the way through. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Think about it. You said war is coming. Destruction coming. You know what war? Missiles come. Nuclear missiles come. So how are the angels going to know which people to save if there's not a mark on them? Right. Got to think about things like that, bro. Right. God is recording what we're saying right now. So when those bombs come, and give me out of Psalms 91 and 7. When those bombs come and people die to the left and to the right, but you in the midst is like, wait, wait, wait. I'm still alive? Why is that? Because I decided to get myself together and obey. Right. That's Because you said it. Destruction coming. War coming. Oh, but I'm going to show you that scriptural, bro. Watch this. 
Psalm chapter 91, verse 7. Go ahead. A thousand shall fall at thy side, uh -huh. and ten thousand at thy right hand. So you got people, about a thousand, dropping dead to the left and right of you. Read. But it shall not come nigh thee. It shall not come nigh thee. Read. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. The reward of the wicked is the war, the nuclear missiles. Right. The reward of the wicked is death. Right. But if you do what you're supposed to do, get yourself right, you're going to see them dying, but you're going to be saved. Right. You're going to be delivered. Read. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. You got to live in this Bible. Yes, you can't be going to the club turning up no more. Now nah, you got to be with your brother studying. You got to have one wife. You got to be wearing fringes in the border of blue. Watch this, 1 Corinthians 11, 3. Watch this, man. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of a woman is the man. So it's say the head of every man is Christ. Ain't talking about our physical head right there, right? Not right there, it's not. It says our head is Christ, the Son of God. Read it again from the top. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. That's who we are in subjection to, to Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And guess what? The woman, she, she answer us. She can't go to Christ without going through the black man. Right. And they hate that thing right there. Think about it. The black woman, modern black woman, she out of, she's out of order today. Because she goes in direct opposition of a black man. Because why? She's following America. She's following the liberties that the white man has given her in his captivity. Free. And the head of Christ is God. It says that the head of Christ is God. Christ said he can't do his own will. Only the will of the Father that sent him. He is subjection. So guess what we got to do? We got to be in subjection too. Free. Every man. Every what? Every man. Come on. Praying or prophesying. So whenever we, because we men, right? Whenever we pray or whenever we prophesy, prophesying is what? Teaching the oracles of this Bible. The testimony of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Every man. Praying or prophesying. Having his head covered. Having his what? His head covered. So now it's talking about our physical head. This thing right here. It said every time we pray or prophesy, having our physical head covered. Read dishonoring his head. So if you have your physical head covered, you're dishonoring Christ while you're in the midst of prayer and prophecy. Right. So now having an understanding, you didn't know that before, what would you do since you have your physical head covered right now? If you want to honor Christ, which is your head that you should be in subjection to, what would you do to your physical head right now? So what you going to do? My brother, that's my brother right there. Give me Jeremiah 7 and 22, man. Man, we need to get in contact with you, bro. All right, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 22. Watch this, man. And we, we'll, end it, we'll end it right here. Watch this. 7 and 22. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 22. Go ahead. For I speak not unto your fathers, nor command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Right, that's us. Remember uh, Moses part the Red Sea and we walked through it? That was our forefathers that walked through the Red Sea when Moses said, let my people go. That's us. Read it again. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. So God said way back then, way back then, thousands of years ago, it wasn't about the law of sacrifice. It wasn't about rams and bullocks. It was never about that. It was about one thing. Read. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice. Do what? Obey my voice. Come on. And I will be your God. God wants us to choose him. Right. And he said, as long as we choose him, he'll protect us, bro. Right. That's right. You believe that? Believe All praise to the Father. Matthew 26 and 6. Let's get our brother's information, man. It's nice to meet you, bro. Yes, sir. Lord, I'll see you again, man. All right.
community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 